Hey, what's up? This is Matt Shebaum from the Mountain Riding Lab and Backcountry Access. Today we're going to talk about how to get the goods and have a safe day in the backcountry. Before you head out in the backcountry, it's pretty important to take an avalanche class. So that should be one of the first things you do. And then as you get ready for the day, you want to check the avalanche forecast, the weather forecast. You want to make sure you have all your avalanche gear, your beacon shovel probe. And then when you get together with your group, it's important to get on the same page and come up with a plan based on that avalanche forecast. Yeah, so looking at the map here, we're gonna kind of head up towards where we were yesterday, um, head out towards the pass there, and then get into some of this terrain a little bit further back. Some things I always make sure I have with me are my transceiver, shovel, probe, airbag, and radio. So I'm thinking about what extra layers I want to carry based on the temperature that day. So either an extra puffy jacket in the tunnel bag or not, or maybe just a mid layer. I'm also thinking about the visibility. So I might change my goggle lenses and pack different goggles for the day, depending on what I'm going to do. Yep. Switch them back to transmit and go ahead and put them away. Do a quick radio check just to make sure we're all on the same channel. Radio check, Matt. Yeah, this is Will. Go for Sam. Terrain's probably the most important piece of the puzzle uh, when we're looking at the whole avalanche problem. Where we go, we have full control over. We can't control the weather, we can't control the avalanche conditions, but we can't control where we go ride our sleds. When I'm out riding for the day, we usually set up predetermined places where we're gonna stop, we're gonna shut our sleds off, we're gonna have a discussion about what we're seeing and then what that means for the plan down the road. It's really important in those check-ins that everybody has a voice, everybody has an opinion, uh, and everybody speaks up if they've seen you know, one of those red flags that we've been watching out for. Hey Will, what do you think about uh, riding up here in this zone that Sam wants to ski? We could probably go right over here a little bit. Um, but I see some terrain that um, kind of matches the avalanche forecast, like that higher elevation, wind-loaded, exposed stuff. There is a new little crown kind of just above those trees, so I think we want to be careful of like some of those more open pockets in the trees, because just because there's trees doesn't mean it can't slide. trees we were talking about right here they look pretty fun let's go rip them sweet i'll follow you yeah just remember at the top there's some of that open stuff we were going to stay off of so just keep that in mind okay right on to what the mountains are telling me. If I'm seeing natural avalanches, that's a really red flag sign of instability. Yo, come back up to that spot we were just climbing up. I got something to show you. Oh, looks like we got a little wind slab to release, huh? Uh, I just rolled off the top of that to test this slope and uh, you know, trying to confirm that forecast of the wind slab problem and got a little little pocket to release, you know, and I think it's probably has something to do with the uh, time of day. The sun's been out for a while heating these slopes up, so it's just a little bit more sensitive. When you ride the same zone a lot, it's easy to become complacent. It's important to be objective and recognize that not every day has the same conditions. Hey Sam, uh, I just did a test slope on a northeast aspect up here uh, in the upper bowl and uh, I got a little maybe 8 to 10 inch wind slab to pop off. Thanks for that information, I was about to get ready and start skinning up. I'm going to do a hand shear test on my way up, I'll let you know the results of that but I'm going to keep it a little bit mellower. Mostly just powder here, I'm not really feeling anything of a slab like a little bit resistant but still a little bit easy to go right there plan a we we're looking at doing a bigger couloir on the other side of the peak over there but we 
we got some reaction from our snowmobile group. They were on a test slope and they actually had it pop and it was a little bit bigger than expected. So we're gonna go with plan B. We're looking over here, a little bit more mellower pow. If anything were to happen, it's a lot mellower of terrain, not as consequential. And it's just nice and wide open with some nice tree anchors. You should avoid terrain traps because even a small avalanche in a terrain trap area can really increase the consequences of that slope. So the type of gear I bring generally depends on the type of day I'm going to have. Those longer days I usually go for the bigger backpacks. I bring water, bring my BCA ice axe, I generally throw crampons in just because I don't always know what I'm going to get into. And then I always bring my radio no matter what the day is and then just my avalanche essentials. popular backcountry skiing destinations, I have a lot of fear of someone skiing on top of me. In these areas, it's really important to move quickly through this exposure because not only are you dealing with avalanche properties and the terrain itself, but you're also dealing with all of the other people that are around you, and that's something that you can't always mitigate. So when you're finding an island of safety or a place to park your sled in avalanche terrain, you want to make sure that you're out of runouts. That could be just being far enough away from the runout, or it could be a terrain feature that uh, separates you from where the avalanche debris would go. Why don't you go ahead and I'll uh, keep eyes on just to make sure we're not um, putting two people under the slope. Sweet, yeah, I'll radio back when I get to a safe spot. Sweet, sounds good. Some terrain traps that I'm constantly looking out for are uh, creek beds, um, steep gullies, you know, where there's not a lot of room for snow to disperse, cliffs, rocks, trees, anywhere that the harm of being in a small avalanche could be more significant. Part of getting the goods is, uh, you know, doing your homework before you even go riding. So things like checking the weather forecast, the avalanche forecast, to figure out what you're gonna deal with out there on the mountain. And then once you get out riding, you wanna pay attention to your surroundings and maintain situational awareness. Being a dialed backcountry rider is a lifelong process. There's not one avalanche course that you can take. There's not one avalanche video you can watch. It's all about getting out there with your friends, making good decisions, and making sure you make it back to the truck at the end of the day.